your building science fight club and you're putting out all this great content and this great information and it hits us all hard and I'm like who is this person and you know I've slowly started to process what's up but share with me your why why, why do you do this well I I'll tell you why I started doing it why I continue I don't know we'll see up in the up in the air I guess but I started for two reasons the first was that I was getting asked to teach in person more it's hard to get practice teaching in person I get nervous public mm -hmm. speaking and with a camera in front of me that's sort of it's not a natural feeling for right. a lot of people I it certainly wasn't for me and on Instagram I realized I could kind of test drive mm -hmm. what I was thinking of teaching in a really comfortable setting. It's a lot easier to get a question in the comment section when I'm sitting at home in my pajamas on a Saturday and I have time to think about the answer right. and or, or do research and ask somebody else before answering rather than getting a question for the first time in front of 200 people when right. someone's paying me to be there. It's just really nerve-wracking. Um, so that's how I started, was to get more comfortable teaching. Um, and then the second reason I started was because I'd get questions from my classmates, mostly my classmates from architecture school, mm -hmm. who were getting to be more senior in their own firms. And they'd ask, they'd come to me and they'd be like, look, I don't really understand this. And I asked my project manager about it, and I get the feeling that he didn't really, he answered, but he didn't understand right. it either. So what do you have to say? What do you think? And uh, so I started helping them a little bit by taking photos on, on job sites that were my projects and annotating them mm -hmm. so that they could kind of learn one little thing at a time as opposed to getting home and trying to crack a textbook or right. something. Right. I love your annotations. I've, I've played around with some of my own annotations as well, but uh, it really does simplify things and it has become something that's very distinct to your posts and kind of what you put out there. And they've really just gotten better and better and better. And it's I really fun. I can practice. It's good, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to learn a new uh, software program, actually. Oh, really? I use, um, I use Procreate, for, which is just from the App Store. Mm -hmm. But there's another one that is uh, has a lot more features for architects. It's called mm -hmm. Trace uh, by Morfolio. Anyway, mm -hmm. I'm trying to train myself to get even better at those uh, markups and make them a little bit more, more clear. But I get asked a lot by people. Can you change your font? I'm like, that's not a font. That's my handwriting. Gotta, and I'm not changing it. Well, the, the other thing that really stands out to me about a lot of your posts is your ability to simplify the very complex and put it more in layperson's terms. Can you just share a little bit about maybe why or how you feel you're able to do that? Because we don't really see that often enough. I think I'm good at it because I spent a lot of my career, my professional life, being paid to do stuff that I was not competent to do. Uh -huh. So I spent a lot of time confused. And As we all have been at some points in our life, right? Yeah, it's like step up to the plate, you gotta figure it out. Yeah, particularly though in construction, at least in my role, I felt like I spent actually years. Mm -hmm. it's really, it's very hard to do this because it's demoralizing when you feel like you don't understand the justification for the majority of what you do. It's, I can imagine. Not yeah. easy yeah. times when yeah. I was doing that. But um, having to learn myself, I guess, is really helpful. I think about, uh, and, and I guess I'm not that separated from not knowing stuff. Mm -hmm. So I guess I remember what it was like to be clueless. So I don't, so two things. Like, one, I like to, um, I learn in a pretty methodical way, A, then B, then C. Mm -hmm. And so I teach that way too, and I think a lot of people find that useful. And then second is, uh, nobody, I've learned a lot as an adult, and nobody likes to be embarrassed by what they don't know or humiliated for it. And I feel very, very strongly about that. There's a lot of uh, fear of being embarrassed by asking questions in our industry, and I am just, I hate that. I don't like for people to feel bad about what they don't know already, and um, I want everybody to feel comfortable uh, to feel comfortable learning and I, mm -hmm. I think that that uh, I think that that really helps other people I think I hope that that comes through and there's a pretty vibrant comment section in my feed and I think it's for that reason that people don't feel embarrassed or ashamed when uh, when they don't know something to ask or when when something I'm saying doesn't seem consistent with other stuff they've learned I want them to tell me that right because right. maybe I'm wrong right yeah, I think that your your feed has really become a safe place for people, and I think part of that is your personality coming through, and that you seem pretty easygoing about what you're presenting. You're not doing it with a bunch of attitude. You definitely have a lot of passion about it, yes, I but do. you're pretty 
understanding that it's okay if we don't all understand everything. And even when a pro like me is kind of bouncing ideas off of you and different type of stuff, I am curious what you think about what I say and vice versa. And it's just really interesting and helpful. And I'm very comfortable at being able to talk to you about it and I'm so glad. I'm yeah so, glad. so it, it's been it's, a lot of fun it makes things better for for not for not just you or not just other people that are that are learning but I, I'm learning from it also like right, a lot. right so there's a lot of stuff that I just don't know I spent my background is much more heavily focused in the in the commercial construction world mm-hmm. and for example I didn't know that it was really common to have only a one inch airspace behind brick in residential construction. Uh-huh. In commercial construction, it's almost always two inches. And it's pretty easy to keep a two inch, not pretty easy, but a, a, to keep a it relatively open, right. attentive installation. Mm-hmm. It, you can keep that cavity pretty open. Right. But in residential construction with only one inch, it's really tough. Anyway, I posted on this once without recognizing that there was any kind of difference. And one great commenter occurred. Kurt Mittenbuehler, who posts a lot on construction practices in uh-huh. China, actually, but he has a background in that. I think he's the Chicago area. Uh-huh. He's like, "What are you talking about? It's you can't keep a reasonably keep a brick cavity clear on residential construction." Right, right. And I and I knew. Well, if Kurt's disagreeing with me on something, I must not be understanding mm-hmm. something. And so anyway, that's just one example of yeah. thousands of things that I've learned that have made me better as a teacher to know that there there are things that are different in different parts of the country or different right. construction types and it's it, it's not just me it's a community and it's uh it's a cool thing i love it it is and the community is really growing and excelling and i'm seeing kind of the shift from a lot of these old world more traditional ideas or at least old world to me of just kind of how it's been done versus how it should be done and i think that we're really turning the tide and i think it's people like you and the shared ideas of how we think it should be and then the, just the substantiation and and the, the appreciation for what we're all putting out there yeah this really is a way that we should do it look you know i think it she thinks it he thinks it and here's why here's logic here's deductive reasoning behind what we're saying so if you disagree why there's and i'm willing to listen you know there's strength in numbers here with this stuff too i've, I've gotten a few people today and actually in the past couple weeks come up to me and be like like you have no idea how much you've helped me i already understood this concept but i couldn't i couldn't get buy-in with my right team, right my totally, totally so i sent them over to you and and they were suddenly like oh okay you know something i've been telling them for the past five years, suddenly they were like, oh, okay, I guess I will do it your way. So right, it's, right. Um, very satisfying to, to hear that. Yeah, well, absolutely. I think you're doing great, great work. Thank well, you. Thank Keep you. it up. Thank you. You too. All right. Appreciate it. Adios, right. amigos.